Welcome back to Mr. Gard's Maths class. Today we're going to be looking at using Pythagoras' theorem. So the previous lesson sort of explained it and why we had c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now we're actually going to use it to solve some problems. Before we do that though, things that you need to remember, hypotenuse, that's the long side of a right angled triangle, and thirds, which are square roots. The part in blue is the formula that we spoke about the other day, or in the other lesson. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, provided C squared is the long, or C is the long side of the right angled triangle, or the hypotenuse. Now we're going to have a look at a few examples here, starting down in the bottom left. Here we have a triangle where we've been given the two shorter side lengths. One is 5, one is 12. A little note is that often when these images are drawn to scale or very similar, you know, close to scale, we can get a ballpark of what the hypotenuse value should be. And if I told you that C was 100, that was 100, that would seem a little bit ridiculous. The triangle, you couldn't make that triangle. So we know that C must be bigger than 12, as the hypotenuse is always longer than each of the two shorter sides. But it's not going to be massive. So it's probably going to be a little bit bigger than 12. So let's give it a go. C squared, always rewrite the formula, is equal to A squared plus B squared. We don't know C, so it stays as C squared. A, we'll say is 5. So it's 5 squared plus 12 squared. C squared equals 25 plus 144. Let's give ourselves a bit more room. C squared, therefore, equals 169. Now, we don't want to know what C squared is. We want to know what just C is. So we need to get the square root of 169. Now, often you will need a calculator to solve for this, but I know that the square root of 169 is 13. So in this case, the value of C, the hypotenuse, is 13, just as we thought, a little bit bigger than 12. Now that one works, we happen to get a whole number. Now that is not always going to be the case. Let's have a look at this next example. This time we have a right angled triangle, and it's actually an isosceles triangle. Both of these sides are the same. Now, when we solve this one, we will do the same process. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared, why that goes red, I'm not sure equals a squared is 7 squared plus 7 squared. c squared equals 49 plus 49. It is also worth noting, what do you think c is going to be roughly? It's going to be bigger than 7, but not that much bigger. Just looking at the shape. So, c squared equals 98. We need to work out the square root of 98 so that we can work out what just c is, not c squared. Now, I know that that's got to be just less than 10 because 10 squared would be 100. So the square root of 98 is 9.90 when rounded to two decimal places, just less than 10. 
And finally, one more. Let's do this one in green. C squared. Looking again at this one, we have a shorter side of 2 and another short side of 14. C must be a little bit bigger than 14, just looking at our image. There's that red line again. A squared plus B squared. Where C squared equals 2 squared plus 14 squared. A lot of these things just take a bit of repetition. C squared equals 4 plus 196. C squared equals 200. Now we just need to work out what the square root of 200 is. The square root of 200. So use your calculator and we find that it's 14.14 when rounded to two decimal places, which is, as we thought, just a little bit bigger than 14. So there's just a few examples. Now that formula as it's written, only works for the hypotenuse length. In the next lesson, we'll talk about how to find one of the shorter sides if you've been given the hypotenuse. Thank you for listening.